Welcome to O'Shea Woodworks. In today's video, I am building a bandsaw box. You can make these as big or as small as you want in any design that you desire and store whatever you like in it. The great thing about making these is you can be as creative as you want and don't have to follow any plans. Also, if the only power tool you have is a bandsaw, I have great news for you. That's all you really need. Step one is to glue some boards together. In this video, I am using maple and oak, but again, use your imagination and use whatever combinations of wood you would like. It is important to get glue on the whole board so you have a tight seal, and so when you clamp your boards together, you get a nice amount of squeeze out. Next, clamp those pieces together. There is no need to go overboard and tighten too much, but you want a decent amount of pressure you can see that on all of the seams I'm getting good glue squeeze out, which is exactly what we want to see. Here's a close up of the sides where you can see the glue squeezing out. I let this sit for about 18 hours. The next day, I unclamped everything and headed over to my miter saw again. Again, you can do this whole project using only a bandsaw, but if you have the tools, go ahead and use them. Remember when I said you can make one of these without any plans? Well I looked around my shop and found something with an edge and decided I would use a small level to outline my box. You can really use anything to improvise. Next, head over to your bandsaw and cut out the previously drawn outline. And just like that, you have created the outside of your box. Time to draw your drawers. Use anything you would like. Here you can see me cutting out the back side of the box. We are going to set this piece aside to reattach on a later step. Now it's time to cut out the drawers. When making your cut into the side of the box, it is best to go with the grain of the wood. Later, we are going to be gluing this separation together and trying to hide the cut. Of course, it is easier to hide that cut if you're using a darker type of wood, such as walnut. A handy tip that could save you some time later is to label your cutouts. My drawers happen to be all very similar in size and shape, so I thought it was a good idea to save me from puzzling it out later. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that like and subscribe button. There is also a notification button so that you can be notified anytime I post a new video. This goes a long way to help supporting the channel. Next I'm going to cut off the fronts and backs of my drawers. You can see that I labeled these as well, front, top, front, back and so on. This will make life a lot easier later.
Now it's time to draw our drawer outline. This is where we are going to use the bandsaw to carve out the unwanted wood. Back to the bandsaw to cut out our middles. Here I am putting some glue in the cuts in our main box and clamping it. This was trickier and I had to be careful not to clamp too tight because I got pretty close to the edges, the ends were pretty thin. Time to sand your drawers. Get it done now before the fronts and backs are on. This is another big time saver. Now we get to glue the fronts and backs onto the drawers. This is one of my favorite parts of the project because we get to see it all come together. One of the first things I learned as a woodworker is that you can never have enough clamps. I had to do the gluing and clamping over the course of a couple of days. If you have more clamps than I do, you could do this whole project from start to finish in a couple of days. After all the seams in your main box and your drawers have dried, it's time to move on to our next step, sanding. You can see that on my drawer I needed to sand it down so that it would fit into the slot. This is completely normal since we have made that hole smaller when we glued it together. The bottom two drawers fit in pretty well, so I just ended up sanding them until they were smooth. Earlier in the video, we set aside that back piece that was cut off. Now is the time to glue it back on. I clamped it together, and I waited overnight. I found a scrap piece of walnut in my shop and cut three small drawer pulls and glued these onto the drawer fronts. I didn't bother clamping these. I like the contrast of the dark wood on our lighter colored wood. Now it is time to finish the box. I have this antique oil in my shop and I've put some on other boxes in the past. I like the natural looking finish it gives it. Cover your project in whatever finish you like. This is where you get some real satisfaction, when you get to see the natural grain of the wood pop when you put on your finish. Finally, put some finish on your drawers. I used a foam brush to get into all the nooks and crannies of the drawers.
After a few days, here is the final product. These are real fun to build because you make them however you like. They make great gifts.